the Nazi regime. The Nazi regime. regime. When Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of the German Reich on January 30th, 1933, he was not yet 44 years old. From his birth in Austria in 1889 to the outbreak of the war in 1914, his life had been a succession of failures. Seven years, 1907 to 14, being passed as a social derelict in Vienna in Munich. There he had become a fanatical pan-German anti-Semite, attributing his failures to the intrigues of international Jewry. The outbreak of the war in August 1914 gave Hitler the first real motivation of his life. He became a super patriot, joined the 16th Volunteer Bavarian Infantry, and served at the front for four years. In his way, he was an excellent soldier. Attached to the regimental staff as a messenger for the first company, he was completely happy, always volunteering for the most dangerous tasks. Although his relations with his superiors were excellent, and he was decorated with the Iron Cross second class in 1914 with the, with the Iron Cross first class in 1918, he was never promoted beyond private first class because he was incapable of having any re real relationships with his fellow soldiers or of taking command of any group of them. He remained in active service at the front for four years. During that period, of, during that period his regiment of 3,500 suffered 3,260 killed in action, and Hitler himself was wounded twice. These were the only two occasions on which he left the front. In October 1918, he was blinded by mustard gas and sent to a hospital at Pacewalk near Berlin. When he emerged a month later, he found that the war finished, Germany beaten, and the monarchy overthrown. He refused to become reconciled to this situation, unable to accept either defeat or the Republic, remembering the war as the second great love of his life, the first being his mother. He stayed with the army and eventually became a political spy for the Reichswehr, stationed near Munich. In the course of spying on the numerous political groups in Munich, Hitler became fascinated by the rantings of Gottfried Feder against the in interest slavery of the Jews. At some meetings, Hitler himself became a participant, attacking the Jewish plot to dominate the world or ranting about the need for pan-German unity. As a result, he was asked to join the German Workers' Party and did so, becoming one of the about 60 regular members and the seventh member of its executive committee. The German Workers' Party had been found by a Munich locksmith, Anton Drexler, on January 5, 1919, as a nationalist pan-German workers' group. In a few months, Captain Ernst Rom of Franz von Epp's corpse of the Black Reichswehr joined the movement and became the conduit by which secret Reichswehr funds coming through Epp were conveyed to the party. He also began to organize a strong-arm militia with the group, the Storm Troops, or SA. When Hitler joined on, in September 1919, he was put in charge of party publicity. Since this was the chief expense, and since Hitler also became the party's leader and orator, public opinion soon came to regard the whole movement as Hitler's, and Rom paid the Reichswehr's funds to Hitler directly. During 1920, the party grew from 54 to 3,000 members. It changed its name to the National Socialist German Workers' Party, purchased the Volkischer Beobachter with 60,000 marks of General von Epp's money and drew up its 25-point program. The party program of 1920 was printed in the party literature for 25 years, but its provisions became more and more, uh, more remote from attainment as the years passed. Even in 1920, many of its clauses were put in to win support from the lower classes rather than because they were sincerely desired by the party leaders. These included 1. Pan-Germanism, 2. German international equality, including the abrogation of the Treaty of Versailles, 3. Living space for Germans, including colonial areas, 4. German citizenship to be based on blood only, with no naturalization, no immigration for non-Germans, and all Jews or other aliens uh, eliminated, 5. All unearned incomes to be abolished, and the state to control all monopolies to impose it an excess profits tax on corporations to communalize the large department stores to encourage small businesses in, in the allotment of government contracts to take agricultural land for public purposes without compensation and to provi provide old age pensions. 6. To punish all war profiteers and usurers with death and
and 7 to see that the press, education, culture, and religion conform to the morals and religious sense of the German race. As the party grew, adding members and spreading out to link up with similar movements and other parties with Germany, of Germany, Hitler strengthened his control of the group. He could do this because he had control of the party newspaper and of the chief source of money and was in its chief public figure. In July 1921, he had the party constitution changed to give the president absolute power. He was elected president, and Drexler was made honorary president, while Max Ammann, Hitler's uh, sergeant in the war, was made business manager. As a consequence of this event, the SA was reorganized under Rom. The word socialist in the party name was interpreted to mean nationalism, or a society without class conflicts, and equality in party and state was replaced by the leadership principle and the doctrine of the elite. In the next two years, the party passed through a series of crises which the chief was the attempted a putsch of November 9th, 1923. During this period, all kinds of violence and illegality, even murder, were condoned by the Bavarian and Munich authorities. As a result of the failure of this period, especially abortive putsch, Hitler became convinced that he must come to power by legal methods rather than by force. He broke with Ludendorff and ceased to be supported by the Reichswehr. He began to receive his chief financial support from the industrialists. He made a tacit alliance with the Bavarian People's Party, by which Prime Minister Heinrich Held of Bavaria raised the ban on the Nazi Party in return for Hitler's repudiation of Ludendorff's anti-Christian teachings. And Hitler formed a new army, armed militia, the SS, to protect itself against Rom's control of the old armed militia, the SA. In the period 1924 to 30, the party continued without any real growth as a lunatic fringe subsidized by industrialists. Among the chief contributors to the party in this period were Karl Beckstein, uh, Berlin piano manufacturer, August Borsig, Berlin locomotive manufacturer, Emil Kurdoff, <coughs> general manager of Rhenish Westphalian Coal Syndicate, Fritz Dyson, owner of the United Steelworks and president of the German Industrial Council, and Albert Vogler, general manager of the Gelsenkirchen Iron and Steel Company, formerly general manager of the United Steelworks. <coughs> During the period, neither uh, Hitler nor his support supporters were seeking to create a mass movement. That did not come until 1930, but during this early period, the party itself was steadily centralized, and the leftish elements, like the Strasser brothers, were weakened or eliminated. In 1927, Hitler spoke to 400 industrialists in Essen. In April 1928, he addressed a similar group of landlords from east of the Elbe. In January 1932, came one of the greatest, greatest triumphs when he spoke for three hours to the industrial club of Dusseldorf, and wanted the support and financial contributions from the, from that powerful group. By that date, he was seeking to build his movement into a mass political party capable of sweeping him into office. This project failed. As we have indicated, by the end of 1932, much of the financial support from the industry had been cut off by Papen, and the party membership was falling away, chiefly to the communists. To stop this decline, Hitler agreed to become chancellor in, in a cabinet in which there would be only three Nazis among 11 members. Papen hoped in this way to control the Nazis and to obtain from them the popular support which Papen had so sorely lacked in his own chancellorship in 1932. But Papen was uh, far too clever for his own good. He, Hugenberg, Hindenburg, and the rest of the intriguers had underestimated Hitler. The latter, in return for Hugenberg's uh, acceptance of the new elections on March 5, 1933, promised that there would be no cabinet changes, whatever, whatever the outcome of voting. In spite of the fact that the Nazis obtained only 44% of the ballots in the new election, Hitler became dictator of Germany within 18 months. One of the chief reasons for this success rests in the position of Prussia within Germany. Prussia was the greatest of 14 states of Germany covering almost two-thirds of the country, and included both the great rural areas of the east and the great industrial areas of the west. Thus, it included the most conservative as well as the most progressive portions of Germany. While its influence was almost as great under the Republic as it had been under the Empire, this influence was a quite different character. Having changed from the chief bulwark of conservatism in, in the earlier period to the chief area of progressivism in the latter period, this change was made possible by the large numbers of enlightened groups in the Rhenish areas of Prussia. 
but chiefly by the fact that the so-called Weimar coalition, the Social Democrats, Center Party, and Liberal Democrats remained unbroken in Prussia from 1918 to 1932. As a consequence of the alliance, the Social Democrat Otto Braun held the position of Prime Minister of Prussia for almost the whole period 1920 to 32. And Prussia was a chief obstacle in the path of the Nazis in the reaction in, uh, and, of, and of reaction in the critical days after 1930. As part of this movement, the Prussian cabinet in 1930 refused to allow either communists or Nazis to hold up municipal offices in Prussia, prohibited Prussian civil service servants from holding membership in either of these two parties, and forbade the use of the Nazi uniform. This obstacle to extremism was removed on July 20, 1932, when Hindenburg, by presidential decree, based on Article 48, appointed Papen Commissioner for Prussia. Papen at once dismissed the eight members of the Prussian Parliamentary Cabinet and granted their governmental functions to men named by himself. The dismissed ministers were removed from their offices by the power of the army, but at once challenged the legality of this action before the German Supreme Court at Leips Leipzig. By its verdict of October 25, 1932, the court decided for the removal for, for the removed officials. In spite of this decision, <coughs> Hitler, after only a, a week in the chancellorship, was able to obtain from Hindenburg a new decree which removed the Prussian ministers from office once more and conferred their powers on the federal vice chancellor, Papen. Control of the police administration was conferred on Hermann Goring. The Nazis already held through Wilhelm Frick control of the Reich Ministry, Ministry of Interior and thus of the national po police powers. Thus Hitler by February 7th had control of the police powers both of the Reich and Prussia. Using this advantage the Nazis began a twofold assault on the op opposition. Goring and Frick worked under a cloak of legality from above while Captain Rahm in command of the Nazi party stormed troops worked, uh, storm troops worked without pretense of legality from below. All uncooperative police officials were retired, removed, or given vacations and were replaced by Nazi substitutes, usually stormtroop leaders. On February 4, 1933, Hindenburg signed an emergency decree which gave the government the right to prohibit a control or control any meetings, uniforms, or newspapers. In this way, most opposition meetings and newspapers were prevented from reaching the public. The attack on the opposition from above was accompanied by a violent assault from below, carried out by the SA and desperate attacks in which 18 Nazis and 51 opp opposition were killed. All communists, most, most socialists, and many center party meetings were disrupted. In spite of all this, it, it was evident a week before the election that the German people were not convinced. Accordingly, under circumstances which are still mysterious, a plot was worked out to burn the Reichstag building and blame the communists. Most of the plotters were homosexuals and were able to persuade a degenerate moron from Holland named van der Lubbe to go with them. After the building was set on fire, van der Lubbe was left wandering about and, it, and was arrested by the police. The government at once arrested four communists, including the party leader in the Reichstag, Ernst Torg Torgler. The, the day following the fire, February 28, 1933, Hindenburg signed a decree suspending all civil liberties and giving the government power to invade any personal, pri personal privacy including the right to search private homes or confiscate property. At once, all communist members of the Reichstag, as well as a thousand of others, were arrested, and all communist and social democrat papers were suspended for two weeks. The true story of the Reichstag fire was kept secret, only with difficulty. Several persons who knew the truth, including the nationalist Reichstag member, Dr. Orberforen, were murdered in March and April and April to prevent their, circula their circulating the true story. Most of the Nazis who were in, the, on the, in on the plot were murdered by Goring during the blood purge of June 30th, 1934. The four communists who were directly charged with the crime were acquitted by the regular German courts, although van der Lubbe was convicted. In spite of these drastic measure, measures, the, uh, the election of March 5th, 1933 was a failure from the Nazi point of view. Hitler's party received only 288 of 647 seats, or 43.9% of the, of the total vote. The Nationalists obtained only 8%, the Communists obtained 81 seats, 
a decree of 19, but the Socialists obtained 125, an increase of 4. The Center Party fell from 89 to 74, and the People's Party from 11 to 2. The Nationalists stayed at 52 seats in the simultaneous election to the Prussian Diet. The Nazis obtained 211, and the Nationalists 43 out of 474 seats. The period from the election of March 5, 1933 to the death of Hindenburg on August 2, 1934 is generally called the period of coordination. The process was carried on like the electoral campaign just finished, but illegal actions from below and legalistic actions from above. From below, on March 7, 7th throughout Germany, the SA swept away much of the opposition by violence, driving it into hiding. They marched to most offices of trade unions, periodicals, and local governments, smashing them up, expelling their occupants, and raising the swastika flag. Um, Minister of Interior Wilhelm Frick condoned these actions by naming Nazis as uh, police president, presidents, presidents in various German states, Baden, Saxony, Württemberg, Bavaria, including General von Epp in Bavaria. These men then proceeded to use their police powers to seize control of the apparatus of state government. The new Reichstag met on March 23rd at the Kroll Opera House. In order to secure a majority, the, Nazi, the Nazis excluded from the session all of the communists and 30 socialist members, about 109 in all. The rest were asked to pass an, an enabling act, which would give the government for four years the right to legislate by decree without the need for the presidential signature as in Article 48 and without constitutional restrictions except in respect to the powers of the Reichstag, the Reichsrat, and the presidency. Since this law required a two-third majority, it could have been beaten if only a small group of the center party had voted against it. To be sure, Hitler made it very clear that he was prepared to use violence against all who refused to cooperate with him, but his power to do so on a clear constitutional issue in Mar March 1933 was much less than it uh, became later, since violence from him on such a question might well have arrayed the, the president and the righteous were uh, against him. In spite of Hitler's intimidating speech, Otto Wells of the Social Democrats rose to explain why his party refused to support the bill. He was followed by Monsignor, Monsignor Kass of the Center Party, who explained that his Catholic group would support it. The vote in favor of the bill was more than su sufficient, being 441 to 94, with the Social Democrats forming the solid minority. Thus, this weak, timid doctrinaire and ignorant group redeemed it themselves by, the cur by their courage after the 11th hour had passed. Under this enabling act, the government issued a series of revolutionary decrees in the next few months. The diets of all the German states, except Prussia, which had had its own election on March 5th, were re reconstituted in the proportions of votes in the national election of March 5th, except that the communists were thrown out. Each party was given its quota of members and allowed to name the individual members on a purely party basis. A similar procedure was applied to local governments, thus the Nazis received a majority in each body. A decree of April 7th gave the Reich, the Reich uh, government the right to name a governor of each German state. This was a new official in power, uh, empowered to enforce the policies of the Reich government even to the point of dismissing the state governments, including the prime ministers, diets, and other hitherto removable, irremovable ju judges. This right was used in, in each state to make a Nazi governor and a Nazi prime minister. <coughs> In Bavaria, for example, the two were Epp and Rom, Rom, while in Prussia the two were Hitler and Göring. In many states, the governor was the district leader of the Nazi party, and where he was not, he was subject to the leader's orders. By the later law of January 30th, 1934, the diets of the states were abolished. The sovereign powers of the states were transferred to the Reich, and the governors were made subordinates of the Reich, Reich Ministry of Interior. All the political parties except the Nazis were abolished in May, June, and July 1933. The communists had been outlawed on February 28th. The Social Democrats were enjoined from all activities on June 22nd, 
and were expelled from various governing bodies on July 7th. The German State Party, Democratic Party, and the German People's Party were dissolved on Ju June 28th and July 4th. The Bavarian People's Party was smashed by the stormtroopers on June 22nd and disbanded itself on the July 4th. The Center Party did the same thing on the following day. A series of pitched battles between the SA and the Steinhelm in April uh, June, through June 1933 ended with the absorption of the latter into the Nazi Party. The Nationalists were smashed by violence on June 21st. Hugenberg was unable to penetrate the SA guard around Hindenburg to protest and on June 28th his party was dissolved. Finally, on July 14th, 1933, the Nazi party was declared to be the only recognized party in Germany. The middle classes were coordinated and disappointed. Wholesale and retail trade associations were consolidated into the Reich Corporation of German Trade under the Nazi Dr. von Rentel. In July 22nd, the same man became president of the German Industrial and Trade Committee, which was a union of all the chambers of commerce. In Germany, these last had been semi-public legal corporations. The breakup of the great department stores, which had, which had been one of the Nazi promises to the petty bourgeoisie since Gottfried Fetter's 25-point program of 1920, was abandoned, according to Hess's announcement of July, July 7th. Moreover, a liquidation of the cooperative uh, societies, which had also been a pr uh, promise of long duration, was abandoned by an announcement of July 19th. This last reversal resulted from the fact that most of the cooperatives had come under Nazi control by being taken over by the Labor Front on May 16, 1933. <clears throat> the Labor was coordinated with resist resi resistance, except from the co Communists. The government declared May 1st a national holiday and celebrated it with a speech by Hitler on the dignity of labor before a million persons at Tempelhof. The next day, the SA seized all union buildings and offices, arrested all union leaders, and sent most of these to concentration camps. The union themselves were incorporated into a Nazi German labor front under Robert Ley. The new leader, in an article in the Volkischer Beobachter, Beobachter uh, promised the employers that henceforth they could uh, be masters in their own house as long as they served the nation, that is, the Nazi party. Uh, work was supplied for uh, labor by reducing the work week to 40 hours with a corresponding wage cut, by prohibiting aliens to work, by enforcing labor service for the government, by grant of loans to married persons, by tax cuts for persons who spent money on repairs, by construction of military automobile roads, and so forth. Agriculture was coordinated only after Hugenberg left the government on June 29th and was replaced by Richard Dar as Reich Minister of Food and Prussian, Prussian Minister of Agriculture. The various land and peasant associations were merged into a single association of which Dar was president, while the various landlords associate, associations were united into the German Board of Agriculture, of which Dar was president also. Religion was uh, coordinated in various ways. The, the evangelical church was reorganized when a non Nazi Frederick von Bodelschwing was elected a Reich Bishop in May 1933, he was forcibly removed from office, and the National Synod was forced to elect a Nazi, Ludwig Muller, in his place, September 27th. At the elections for church assemblies in July 1933, government pressure was so great that a majority of Nazis was chosen in each. In 1935, the Ministry of Church Affairs under Hans Carroll was set up with power to issue the church ordinances having the force of law and with complete control over church property and funds. The prominent pro Protestant leaders like Martin Niemöller, who objected to these steps, were arrested and sent to concentration camps. The Catholic Church made every effort to cooperate with the Nazis, but soon found it was impossible. It withdrew its con condemnation of the na Nazism on March 28, 1933, and signed a concordat with von Papen on July 20th. With disagreement, the, the, the state re re recognized freedom of religious belief and worship, exemption of the clergy from certain civic duties, and the right of the church to manage its own affairs and to establish denominational schools. Governor of the German states were given a right to object to nominations to the highest clerical posts. Bishops were to take an oath of loyalty, and education was to continue to function as it had been doing. 
This agreement with the church began to break down almost at once. Within 10 days of signing the Concordat, the Nazis began to attack the Catholic Young League and the Catholic press. Church schools were restricted and members of the clergy were arrested and tried on charges of evading the monetary foreign exchange regulations and of immorality. The church condemned the efforts of the Nazis like Rosenberg to replace Christianity Christ, Christianity by re, uh, revived German paganism and such laws as the permitting sterilization of socially objectionable persons. Rosenberg's book, The Myth of the 20th Century, was put on an index. Catholic scholars exposed its errors in a series of studies in 1934. And finally, on March 14, 1937, Pope Pius XI condemned many of the tenets of Nazism in the encyclical Mit Brennmann der Sorge. Attempts to coordinate the civil service began with the law of April 7, 1933, and continued to end uh, of the regime without ever being completely successful because of the lack of capable personnel who were loyal Nazis. Non-Aryans, Jews, or persons married to non-Aryans, politically unreliable persons, and Marxists were discharged and loyalty to Nazism was required for appointment and promotion in the civil service. Of the chief elements in German society, only the presidency, the army, and the Catholic Church, and industry were not coordinated by 1934. In addition, the bureaucracy was only partially controlled. The first of these, the presidency, was taken over completely in 1934 as the result of a deal with the army. By the spring of 1934, the problem of the SA had become acute since this organization was directly challenging two members of the quartet, the army and the industry. Industry was being challenged by the demand of the SA for the second revolution, <coughs> that is, the economic reforms which would justify the use of the word socialism in the name National so Socialism. The army was being challenged by the demand of Captain Rom, that is, SA, uh, be incorporated into the Reichswehr, which were officer holding the same rank in the latter as he already held in the former. Since the Reichswehr had only 300,000 men, while the SA had 3 million, this would have been swamped the officer's corpse. Hitler uh, had denounced this project on July 1st, 1933, and Frick repeated this 10 days later. Nevertheless, Rom repeated his demand on April 18th, 1934, and was echoed by Edmund Heinz and Karl Ernst. In full cabinet meeting, Minister of War General von Blomberg refused. Attention situation a tense situation de developed. If Hindenburg died, the Reichswehr might have liquidated the Nazis and restored the monarchy. On June 21st, Hindenburg ordered Blumberg to use the army, if necessary, to restore order in the country. This was regarded as a threat to the SA. Accordingly, Hitler made a deal with to destroy the SA in return for free hand to deal with the presidency, which when it came vacant, when it became vacant. This was done uh, and a meeting of SA leaders was called by Hitler for June 30, 1934, at Bad WSC in Bavaria. The SS, under Hitler's personal command, arrested the SA leaders in the middle of the night and shot most of them at once. In Berlin, Goring did the same to the SA leaders there. Both Hitler and Goring also killed most of their personal en enemies. The Reichstag incendiar incendiaries, Gregor Strasser, General, and M Mrs. von Schleicher, all of von Papen's close associates, Gustav von Kahr, all of those who had known Hitler in the early days of his failure, and many others. Papen escaped only by a narrow margin. In all, several thousands were eliminated in this blood purge. Two excuses were given for this violent action. That the murdered men were homosexuals, something which had been known for years, and that, we were, that they were members of the conspiracy to murder Hitler. That they were in a conspiracy was quite true, but it was by no means mature in June 1934, and it was aimed at the army and heavy industry, not at Hitler. In fact, Hitler had been wavering until the last moment whether he, he would throw in his lot with the Second Revolution or, the, or with the Quartet. His decision to join the latter and exterminate the former was an event of great significance. It irre irrevocably made the Nazi movement a counter-revolution of the right, using the party organization as an instrument for protecting the economic status quo. The supporters of the Second Revolution were driven underground, forming a black front under the leadership of Otto Strasser, 
This movement was so in ineffectual that the only choice facing the average German was the choice between reactionary mode of life built up about the surviving members of the quartet, army, and industry, and the completely irrational nihilism of the inner clique of the Nazi party. The only, re only as the regime approached its end uh, did a third possible way appear. A revived progressive and co cooperative Christian humanism which sprang from the reaction engendered within the quartet by the realization that Nazi nihilism was merely the logical outcome of the quartet's customary methods of pursuing its customary goals. Many of the persons associated with the New Third Way were destroyed by the Nazis in the systematic destructiveness which followed the attempt to assassinate Hitler on June 20, 1944. In return for Hitler's decisive step, the destruction of the SA on June 30, 1934, uh, the army permitted Hitler to become president following Hindenburg's death in August. By combining the offices of president and chancellor, Hitler obtained the president's legal right to rule by decree and obtained as well the supreme command of the army, a position which he solidified by requiring a personal oath of unconditional obedience from each soldier. Law of August 20, 1934. From this time on, in the minds of the Reichs, where in the bureaucracy, it was both legally and morally impossible to resist Hitler's orders. Thus, by 1934, the Nazi movement had reached its goal, the establishment of an authoritarian state in Germany. The word used here is authoritarian, for unlike the fascist regime in Italy, the Nazi regime was not totalitarian. It was not totalitarian because two members of the quartet were not coordinated, a third member was coordinated only incompletely, and unlike Italy or the Soviet Russia, the economic system was not ruled by the state but was subject to self-rule. All this is not in accord with the popular opinion about the nature of the Nazi system, either at the time it was flourishing or since. Newspapermen and journalistic writers applied the term totalitarian to the Nazi system, and the name has stuck without any real analysis of the facts as they existed. In fact, the Nazi system was not totalitarian either in theory or in practice. The Nazi movement, in the simplest analysis, was an aggregation of gangsters, neurotics, mercenaries, psychopaths, and merely discontented with a small intermixture of ideas. This movement was built up by the Quartet as a counter-revolutionary force against, first, the Weimar Republic, internationalism, and democracy, and against, second, the danger of social revolution, especially communism, engendered by the World Economic Depression. <coughs> this movement, once it came to power at the behest of the Quartet, took on life uh, in goals of its own quite different from, and indeed largely inimical to, the life and goals of the Quartet. No showdown or open conflict ever arose between the movement and the Quartet. Instead, the modus vivendi was worked out by which the two chief members of the Quartet, industry and the army, obtained their desires while the Nazis obtained the power and privileges for which they yearned. <coughs> The seeds of conflict com continue to exist and even to grow between the movement and its creators, especially because of the fact that the movement worked continually to create a substitute industrial system and a substitute army parallel to the old industrial sy system and the old Reichswehr. Here again, the threatening conflict never broke out because the Second World War had the double result that it demonstrated the need for solidarity in the face of the enemy and it brought great booty and profits to both sides. Then the industrialists and Reichswehr on one hand into the party on the other hand. Except for the rise of the party, the profits, the power, and the prestige which accrued to the leaders, but not to the ordinary members of the party, the structure of German society was not drastically changed after 1933. It was still sharply divided into two parts. The rulers and the ruled. The three chief changes were, one, the methods of techniques by which the rulers controlled and ruled controlled the ruled and were modified and intensified so that law and legal procedures practically vanished and power exercised through force, economic pressures, and propaganda became much more naked and direct in its application. Two, the quartet which had held real power from 1919 to 33 were rearranged and increased to a quintet such as existed before 1914 and uh, three, the line between rulers and ruled was made sharper with fewer persons in an ambiguous position than earlier in German history. This was made more acceptable acceptable, yeah, acceptable yeah, to the ruled by creating a new third group of non-citizens, Jews and foreigners, uh, which could be exploited and oppressed even by the second group of the ruled. The following table shows the approximate relationships of the ruling groups in three periods of German history in the 20th century. We have the Empire, the Empire, um, the Weimar Republic, and the Third Reich. The Empire, um, we have the Emperor, 
And the Third Reich is a Nazi party, leaders only. And then we have uh, the, M the Empire, the Army, Weimar Republic, the Army, the Third Reich, Industry, the Empire, Landlords, Weimar Republic, the Bureaucracy, the Third Reich, um, the Army. The Empire, um, Industry, Weimar Republic, Landlords, the Third Reich, Landlords. The world groups below these rulers have remained roughly the same. In the Third Reich, they included one peasants, two laborers, and three the petty bourgeoisie of clerks, retailers, artisans, small industry, and so on. Industry, and so on. Four professional groups such as doctors, druggists, teachers, engineers, dentists, and so on. Below these was the submerged group of non-Aryans and the inhabitants of occupied areas. A revealing light in the cast on um, Nazi society by examining uh, the positions of the ruling groups. We shall examine each of these in reverse order. The influence of the landlord group in the earlier period rested on the tradition rather than on power. It was supported by a number of factors. One, the close personal connections of the landlords with the emperor, the army, and the bureaucracy. Two, the peculiar voting rules in Germany which gave the landlords undue influence in Prussia and gave the state of Prussia undue influence in Germany. Three, the economic and social powers of the landlords, especially east of the Elbe, have a power based on their ability to bring pressure to bear on tenants and agricultural laborers in that area. All these sources of power were weakening, even under the Empire. The Republic and the Third Reich merely extended a process already well advanced. The economic power of the landlords was threatened by the agricultural crisis after 1880 and was clearly evident in the, their demand for tariff protection after 1895. The bankruptcy of the Junker estates was bound to undermine their political influence even if the state was willing to support them with subsidies and Ostilf indefinitely. The departure of the emperor and the change in the position of the army and bureaucracy under the republic weakened these avenues of indirect influence by the landlords. The change in voting regulations after 1918 and the ending of voting after 1933 combined with the increasing absorption of Prussia and other Länder into a unified German state reduced the political power of the landlord group. Finally, their social influence was weakened by the, by the migration of German farm laborers from eastern to central and western Germany and the replacement by Slav form farm labor. This decrease in the power of the landlord group continued under the Third Reich and was intensified by the fact that the group was one segment of the quartet which was successfully coordinated. The landlords lost most of their economic power because of the control of their ec economic life was, was not left in the hands of the landlords as was done with industry. In both cases, economic life was controlled chiefly by cartels, cartels and associations, but in industry, these were controlled by industrialists, while in agriculture, they were controlled by the state in close cooperation with the party. Prices, production, conditions of sale, and in fact, every detail about agriculture was in control of a government corporation called the Reichsnarstand which consisted of a co complex of groups, associations, and boards. The leaders of this complex was the Minister of Food and Agriculture, named by Hitler. This leader appointed the subordinate leaders of all members of organizations of the Reichsnarstand, and these in turn named their subordinates. This process was continued down to the lowest individual, each leader naming his direct subordinates according to the leadership principle. Every person engaged in any activity concerned with agriculture, food, or raw material production, including lumber, fishing, dairying, and grazing, belonged to one or several associations in the Reichsnarstand. The associations were organized both on territorial and on a functional basis. On a functional basis, basis they were organized in both vertical and horizontal associations. On a territorial basis, where 20 regional pe peasant ships uh, Landesbornschaften uh, sub, uh, subdivided into 515 local peasant ships. Uh, Kreisbornschaften uh, on a horizontal basis were associations of persons in the same activity, such as uh, granny flour, churning butter, growing grain, and so on. On a vertical basis were associations of all persons concerned with the production and processing of any single commodity, such as grain or milk. 
These organizations all formed on the leadership principle were chiefly concerned with prices and production quotas. These were controlled by the state, but prices were set at a level sufficient to give a profit to most participants, and quotas were based on assessment as estimated by the farmers themselves. While the landlords lost most of most power in this way, they received economic advantages. As befitting as befitted a counter-revolutionary movement, the Nazis increased the wealth and privileges of the landlords. The report on the Osthilf scandal, which had been made for Schleicher in 1932, was pre permanently uh, suppressed. Pre, uh, yeah, permanently. The autarky program gave them a stable market for their productions, shielding them from the vicissitudes which they had suffered under liberalism with its unstable markets and fluctuating prices. The prices fixed under Nazism were not high but were adequate, especially in combination with other advantages. By 1937, price, prices paid to farmers were 23% more than in 1933, although still 28% below those of 1925. Larger farms which used hired labor were aided by the prevention of unions, strikes, and rising wages. Labor forces were increased by using the labor services of boys and girls in the Nazi youth movement and labor service. Payment for interest and taxes were both reduced, the former from 950 million marks in 1929 to 30 to 630 million marks in 1935 to 36, and the latter from 740 million to 460 million marks in the same six years. Farmers were exempt completely from unemployment insurance contributions, which amounted to 19 million marks in 1932 to 33. The constant threat of breaking up the bankrupt of great estates was removed, whether it arose from the state or from private creditors. All farms of over family size were made secure in possession of their owner's family, with no possibility of alienation by increasing the use of, in of entail on great estates and by the Hereditary Farms Act for lesser units. These benefits were greater for larger units than for smaller ones, and the greatest for the large estates. While small farms, 5 to 50 hectares, uh, according to Max Sering, made it a net return of 9 marks a hectare in 1925, large ones, over 100 hect hectares, lost 18 marks a hectare. In 1934, the corresponding figures were 28 and 53, a gain of 19 marks per hectare for small units and of 71 marks per hectare large units. As a result of this growth and profitability of large units, the concentration of ownership of land in Germany was increased, thus reversing a trend. Both the number and the average size of large units increased. Thus, the landlords won great privileges and rewards in the Third Reich but at the cost of a drastic reduction in their power. They were coordinated, like the rest of society outside the ruling groups, with the result that they became the least important of these groups. The bureaucracy was not completely coordinated, but it found its power greatly reduced. The civil service was not, as we have indicated, purged of non-Nazis, although Jews and obvious anti-Nazis were generally retired. Only in the Ministry of Economics, perhaps because of the complete reorganization of the ministry, was there any extensive change at first. But this change did not bring in party members. It brought in men from private business. Outside the Ministry of Economics, the chief changes were, were the ministers themselves and their secretaries of state. The newly created ministries, of course, had new men, but except on the lowest levels, they were not chosen because they were party members. The old division of bureaucracy into two classes, academic and non-academic, with the upper open only to those who passed an academic examination, continued. Only in the lowest non-skilled ranks did party members overwhelm the service. By 1919, of 1.5 million civil servants, 28.2% were party members. 7.2% belonged to the SA and 1.1% belonged to the SS. The Act of 1933, which expelled non-Aryans and political unreliables, affected only 1.1%, or 25 out of 2,339. Of the top civil servants, But new recruits were overwhelmingly party members, so that in time the bureaucracy would have become almost completely Nazi. The Civil Service Act of 1937 did not require party membership, but the candidate had to be loyal to the Nazi idea. In practice, 99% of those appointed to the grade of assessor, the lowest academic rank, were party members from 1933 to 36. However, a law of December 28, 1939 stated what had always been understood that in civil service work a party member must not subject to party orders but only to the orders of the civil service superior. 
Here again, the lower ranks were more subject to party control by means of office party cell, which permitted party members to accomplish their ends by terror. This opened up on an important, if not if non-official, aspect of this subject. Yeah, this opens up an, an important, if non-official, aspect of the uh, subject, of of this subject. A chief change was that. Where formerly the bureaucracy governed by ira by rational known rules under the Nazis, it increasingly governed by uh, governed by irrational and even unknown rules. Neither earlier nor later were these rules made by the bureaucracy itself, and, and to some extent, the latter rules, because of the bureaucracy well-known anti-democratic pro proclivities, may have been more acceptable to the bureaucracy. More important was the influence of party terrorism uh, through the SA, the SS and the secret police, Gestapo. Even more important was the growth outside of bureaucracy of a party organization which countermanded and evaded the decisions and actions of the regular bureaucracy. The regular police were circumvented by the party police. The regular avenues of justice were bypassed by the party courts. The regular prisons were eclipsed by the party concentration camps. As a result, Torgler, acquitted by the regular courts of the charge that he conspired to burn the Reichstag, was immediately thrown into a concentration camp by the secret police. The Neomoller, having served a brief term for violation of religious regulations, was taken from a regular prison to a concentration camp. The Reichswehr's officer's corpse was not coordinated, but found itself more subject to the Nazis than it ever was to the Weimar Republic. The Republic could never have murdered generals as Hitler did in 1934. This weakening of the power of the army, however, was not in relationship to the party as much as it was in relationship to the state. Previously, the army very largely controlled the state, under the Third Reich, uh, the state control the state controlled the army, but the party did not control the army, and for failure to do so, built up its own army, the SS. <clears throat> there was a statutory provision which made it illegal for members of the armed services to be simultaneously members of the party. This incompatibility was revoked in the autumn of 1944. However, the army was quite com completely subjected to Hitler as chief of the state, although not as Führer of the Nazi party. The army had always been subordinate to the chief of the state. When Hitler obtained this position with army consent at the death of Hindenburg on August 2, 1934, he strengthened his position by requiring army officers to take their oath of loyalty to himself personally. All this was possible because of the army, although not coordinated, generally approved of what the Nazis were doing, and uh, where they occasionally disagreed, did so only for tacit tactical reasons. The relations between the two were well stated by Field Marshal Werner von Blomberg, Reich Minister of War and Commander-in-Chief in the Armed Forces until February 1939. Quote, Before 1938-39, the German generals were not opposed to Hitler. There was no reason to oppose Hitler since he produced the result which they desired. After this time, some generals began to condemn his methods and lost confidence in the power of his judgment. However, they failed as a group to take any definite stand against him, although a few of them tried to do so and as a result had to pay for it with their lives or their po or their positions." <clears throat> End quote. To this statement it is necessary only to add that the German officer's corps maintained its autonomous condition and its control of the army by the destruction of its chief rival, the SA, on June 30th, 1934. For this paid on August 2nd, 1934. For this, it paid August 2nd, 1934. After that, it was too late for it to oppose the movement, even if it had wished to do so. The position of the, position of the industrialists in Nazi society was complex and very important. In general, businesses had an extraordinary position. In the first place, it was the only one of the quartet which drastically improved this position in the Third Reich. In the second place, it was the only one of the quartet which was not coordinated significantly and in which the leadership principle was not applied. Instead, industry was left free of uh, government and party control except in the widest terms and except for the exigencies, exigency, exigencies of war and was subjected instead to a pattern of self-regulation built up not on the leadership principle but on the system where power was proportional to the size of the enterprise. In these strange exceptions, we can find uh, one of the central principles in, of the Nazi system. It is a principle which is often missed. We have been told that Germany had a co corporate uh, state or a totalitarian state. Neither is true. There was no real corporation organization, corporate organization. 
even fraudulent as in Italy and Austria. And such an organization, much, much discussed before and after 1933, was quickly dropped by 1935. The term totalitarian cannot be applied to the German system of self-regulation, although it could be applied to the Soviet system. The Nazi system was dictatorial capital, capitalism, that is, a society or organization uh, set that, uh, so that everything was uh, subject to the benefit of capitalism, everything that is compatible with two limiting factors. A, that the Nazi party, which was not capitalist, was in control of the state, and B, that war, which is not capitalist, could uh, force curtailment of capitalist, capitalist benefits, in the short run at least. In this judgment, we must find our terms accurate, define our, our terms accurately. We define capitalism as a system of economics in which production is based on profit for those who control the capital. In this definition, one, must, one point must be noted. The expression, for those who control the capital, does not necessarily mean the owners. In modern economic conditions, large-scale enterprise with widely dispersed stock ownership has made management more important than ownership. Accordingly, profits are not the same as dividends, and in fact, dividends become objectionable to management since they take profits out of its control. The traditional capitalist system was a profit system. In its pursuit of profits, it was not primarily concerned with production, consumption, prosperity, high unemployment, national welfare, or anything else. As a result, its concentration of profits eventually served to injure its profits. This development got the whole society into such a mess that enemies of the profit system began to rise up on all sides. Fascism was the counterattack of the profit system against these enemies. This counterattack was conducted in such a violent fashion that the whole appearance of society was changed, although in the short run, the real structure was not greatly modified. In the long run, fascism threatened even the profit system because of the defenders of that system, businessmen rather than politicians, turned over the control of the state to a party of gangsters and lunatics who in the long run might turn to attack businessmen themselves. In the short run, the Nazi movement achieved the aim of its creators. In order to secure profits, it sought to avert six possible dangers to the profit system. These dangers were, one, from the state itself, two, from organized labor, three, from competition, four, from depression, five, from business losses, six, from alternative forms of economic production organized on these on non-profit basis. These six all merged into one great danger, and the danger from any social system in which production was organized on any basis other than profit. The fear of the owners and the managers of the profit system for any system organized on any other basis became al almost psychopathic. The danger to the profit system from the state has always existed because the state is not essentially organized on a profit basis. In Germany, this danger from the state was averted by the industrialists taking over the state, not directly, but through the, an agent, the Nazi party. Hitler indicates his willingness to act as such an agent in various ways, um, by reassur reassurances such as his Dusseldorf speech of 1932, by accepting as a party leader and his chief economic advisor a representative of heavy industry, uh, Walter Funk, on, on the very day, December 31st, 1931, on which that representative joined the party at the behest of the industrialists, uh, by the purge of those who wanted the second revolution, or a corporate, corporative or totalitarian state, June 30th, 1934. That the industrialists' faith in Hitler on it, this account was not misplaced was soon demonstrated. As Gustav Krupp, the armaments manufacturer, writing to Hitler as the official representative of the Reich Association of German Industry, put it on April 25, 1933, quote, The turn of political events is in line with the wishes which I, myself, and the board of directors have cherished for a long time, end quote. This was true. The Second Revolution was publicly rejected by Hitler as early as July 1933, and many of its supporters sent to concentration camps a development uh, which reached in its climax in the Blood Purge a year later. The radical Otto Wagner was replaced uh, as chief economic advisor to the Nazi party by a manufacturer, Wilhelm Kepler. The efforts to coordinate industry were summarily stopped. Many of the economic activities which had come under state control were reprivatized. The United Steelworks, which the government had purchased from Ferdinand Flick in 1932, as well as three of the largest, largest banks in Germany, which had been uh, taken over during the crisis in 1931, were, were restored to private ownership at a loss to the government. 
Rheinmetall Borsig, one of the greatest corporations in heavy, heavy industry, was sold to the Hermann Goring Works. Many other important firms were sold to private investors. At the same time, the property in, in industrial firms still held by the state was shifted from public control to joint public-private control uh, by being subjected to a mixed board of directors. Finally, municipal enterprise was curtailed. Its profits were taxed for the first time in 1935, and the law permitted municipal electrical power plants um, uh, was revoked in the same year. The danger from uh, labor was not nearly so great as it might seem at first glance. It was not labor itself which was dangerous, because uh, labor itself did not come directly and immediately in conflict with the profit system. Rather, it was the labor getting the wrong ideas, especially Marxist ideas, which did seek to put the labor directly into conflict with the profit system and with the private ownership. As a result, the Nazi system sought to control the ideas of the organization of labor and was quite as eager to control his free time and leisure activities as it was to control his working arrangements. For this reason, it was not sufficient merely to smash the existing labor organizations. This would have left labor free and uncontrolled and able to pick up any kind of ideas. Nazism, therefore, did not try to destroy these organizations, but take them over. All the old unions were dissolved into the German labor front. This gave an amorphous body of 25 million in which the individual was lost. This labor front was a party organization and its finances were under control of the party treasurer, Franz, Franz X. Schwartz. The labor front soon lost all of its economic activities, chiefly to the minister, Ministry of Ec Economics. An elaborate facade of fraudulent organizations which either never existed or never functioned was built up about the labor front. They included the National and Regional Chambers of Labor and the Federal Labor and Economic Council. In fact, the labor front had no economic or political functions and had nothing to do with wages or labor conditions. Its chief functions were 1. to propagandize, 2. to absorb the workers' leisure time, especially by the Strength Through Joy organization, 3. to tax workers for the party's profit, 4. to provide jobs for reliable party members within the labor front itself, and five to disrupt the work class solidarity, working class solidarity. This facade was painted with an elaborate ideology based on the idea that the factory or, or enterprise was a community in which the leader and followers co cooperated. The Charter of Labor of January 20th, 1934, which established this, said, quote, the leader of the plant decided against the followers in all matters pertaining to the plant insofar as they are, are regulated by statute. End quote. A pretense was made that these regulations merely applied to the leadership principle to enterprise. It did not. It did no such thing. Under the leadership principle, the leader was appointed from above. In, in the business life, the existing owner or manager became ipso facto leader. Under this system, there were there were no collective agreements, no way in which any group defended the worker in the face of the great power of the employer. One of the chief instruments of duress was the workbook carried by the worker, which had to be signed by the employer on entering or leaving any job. If the employer refused to sign, the worker could get no other job. Wage scales and conditions of labor previously established by collective agreements were made by a state employee, the labor trustee, created by May 19, 1933. Under this control, there was a steady downward reduction of working conditions, the chief change being from a period wage to a piecework payment. All over, all over time, holiday, night, and Sunday rates were abolished. The, the labor trustee was ordered to set maximum wage rates in, in June 1938, and a rigid seal, ceiling was set in or, October 1939. In return for this exploitation of labor, enforced by the terroristic activity of the party cell in each plant, the worker received certain compensations of which the chief was the fact that he was no longer threatened with the danger of mass unemployment. Employment figures for Germany were 17.8 million persons in 1929, only 12.7 million in 1932, and 20 million by 1939. This increased economic activity went to non-consumers goods rather than consumers goods, as, we, as can be seen from the following indices of production. 
um, production. Um, 1928, 100. Uh, 1929, 100.9. 1932, 58.7. 1938, 124.7. Uh, capital goods. 1928, 100. 1929, 103.2. 1932, 45.7. 1938, 135.9. Consumers goods. Uh, 1928, 100. 1929, 98.5, 1932, 78.1, 1938, 107.8. Business, business hates competition. Such competition might appear in various forms. A, prices. B, raw materials. C, uh, for markets. D, potential competition, uh, creation of new enterprises in the same activity. Um, and E, for labor. All these uh, make planning difficult and jeopardize profits. Businessmen prefer to get together with com competitors so that they can cooperate to exploit consumers to the benefit of profits instead of competing with each other or uh, uh, each other to the injury of, of the profits. In Germany, this was done by three kinds of arrangements. One, cartels. Two, trade associations. Uh, Fachverband. And three, employee employers associations. Uh, Spitzenverband. The cartels regulated prices, production, and markets. The trade associations were political groups organized as chambers of commerce or agriculture. The employers associations sought to control labor. All these existed long before Hitler came to power, an event that had relatively little influence on the cartels, but considerable influence on the other two. The economic power of the cartels left in the hands of businessmen was greatly extended. The employers' associations were coordinated, subjected to party control through the establishment of the leadership principle, and merged into the labor front, but had little to do as all relations with labor, uh, wages, hours, working conditions, were controlled by the state uh, through the Ministry of Economics and the Labor Trustee, and enforced by the party. The trade associations were also coordinated and subject to the leadership principle, being organized into an elaborate hierarchy of chambers of economics, commerce, industry, whose leaders were ultimately named by the Ministry of Economics. All this was to the taste of businessmen. While they, in theory, lost control of the three types of organizations, in fact, they got what they wanted in all three. We have shown that the employers' associations were coordinated, yet employers got the labor, wage, and working conditions they wanted, and abolished labor unions and collective bargaining, which had been their chief ambition in this field. In the second field, trade associations, activities were largely reduced to social and propaganda actions, but the leaders, even under the leadership principle, continued to be prominent businessmen. Of the 173 leaders throughout Germany, 9 were civil servants, only 21 were party members, 108 were businessmen, and the status of the rest is unknown. Of the 17 leaders in provincial economic chambers, all were businessmen, of whom 14 were party members. In the third field, the activities of cartels were so extended that almost all forms of market competition were ended, and these activities were controlled by the biggest enterprises. The Nazis permitted the cartels to destroy all competition by forcing all business into cartels and giving these into the control of the biggest businessmen. At the same time, it did all it could to benefit big business, to forge mergers, and to destroy small bus smaller businesses. A few examples of this process will suffice. A law of July 15, 1933 gave the Minister of Economics the right to make certain cartels compulsory, to regulate capacity of enterprises, and to pro prohibit the creation of new enterprises. Hundreds of decrees were issued under this law. On the same day, the cartel statute of 1923, which prevented cartels from using boycotts against non-members, was amended to permit this practice. As a result, cartels were able to pr prohibit new retail outlets and frequently refused to supply wholesalers or retailers unless they did more than a minimum volume of business or had more than a minimum amount of capital. These actions were taken, for example, by the radio and cigarette cartels. Cartels were controlled by big business since voting power within the cartel was based on out output or number of employees. Concentration of enterprise was increased by various exp expedients such as granting public con contracts only to large enterprises or by Aryanization, which forced Jews to sell out to established firms. As a result, on May 7, 1938, the Ministry of Economics reported that 90,448 out of 600,000 one-man firms had been closed in two years. The Corporation Law of 1937 facilitated mergers, refused to permit new corporations of below 500,000 marks capital, ordered all new shares to be issued at a par value of at least 1,000 marks, and ordered the dissolution of all corporations of less than 100,000 marks capital. 
By this last provision, 20% of all corporations with 0.3% of all corporate capital were condemned. At the same time, share, shareholders lost most of their rights, rights against the board directors, and on the board, the power of the chairman was greatly extended. As an example of a change, the board could refuse information to stockholders on flimsy excuses. The control of raw materials, which was lacking under the Weimar Republic, was entrusted to the functional trade associations. After August 18, 1939, priority numbers, based on the decisions of trade associations, were issued by the Reichstellen, subordinate office, offices of the Ministry of Economics. In, in some critical cases, subordinate offices of the Reichstellen were set up at, as public offices to allot raw materials. But in each case, these only existed, only existing business organizations with, an, with a new name. In some cases, uh, such as coal and paper, they were nothing but the existing cartels. In this way, uh, competition of the old kind was largely eliminated, and that not by the statute of uh, state, but by industrial self-regulation, and, and not at the expense of profits, but to the benefit of profits. Uh, especially of those enterprises which had supported uh, the Nazis, uh, large units in heavy industry. Uh, the threat to industry from depression was eliminated. This can be seen in the following figures. Uh, national income, 1925 to 34 prices, billions. RM, 1929 to 70. Uh, 32, 52, 1938, 84. Per, uh, per capita incomes, 1925 to 34 prices. RM, 1989, 1932, 1938, 1,296. Percentage of national incomes. To industry, in 1929, it was 21%. In 32, it was 17.4. In 38, it was 26.6. Uh, to workers, in 29, it was 68.8. In 32, 77.6. 38, 63.1 to others, 29, 10.2, 32, 5.0, 38.10.3. Number of corporate bankruptcies in 29, 116 in 32, 134 in 38, 7. Profit ratios of corporations, heavy industry in 29, 4.06 percent, 32, uh, negative 6.94 percent, 38, 6.44 percent. In the period after 1933, uh, the threat to industry from forms of production based on a non-profit organization of business largely vanished. Such threats came, could come from government ownership, from corporatives, or from syndicalism. The last was destroyed by the destruction of the labor unions. The corporatives were coordinated by being subjected to ir irrevocably inc and unconditionally to the command and administrative authority of the leader of the German Labor Front, Dr. Robert Ley, on March on May 9th, on May 13th, 1933. The threat uh, from public ownership was eliminated under Hitler, as we have indicated. It would seem from these facts that industry was riding the crest of the wave under Nazism. This is quite true, but industry had to share this crest with the party of, and army. Of these three, it was unquestionably, in at least second place, a higher rank than it had ever achieved in any earlier period of German history. Party participation in business activities was not the threat to industry which it might appear to be at first glance. These participations were the efforts of the party to secure an independent economic foundation and were largely built up on unprofitable activities or non-Aryan, non-German, or labor union activities, and were not constructed at the expense of the legitimate German industry. The Hermann Goring works arose from the government efforts to utilize low-grade iron ore in Brunswick. To this was added various other enterprises, uh, those already in government control, which were thus shifted from a socialized to a profit-seeking basis, those uh, taken from newly annexed areas, and those confiscated from Thyssen uh, when it, he became a traitor. The Gustloff works in complete party control uh, were made up of non-Aryan properties. The labor front, with 65 corporations in 1938, was an imp improvement over the previous situation since all, except the people's auto enterprise, Volkswagen, were taken from labor unions. Other party activities were in publishing, a, a field of little concern to big industry, a largely non-Aryan previously. 
The advent of the war was contrary to the desires and probably to the interests of the industry. Industry wanted to prepare for war since it was profitable, but they did not like war since profits in wartime took a secondary role to victory. The advent of war was the result of a fact that industry was not ruling Germany directly, but was ruling through an agent. It was not government of, by, and for industry, but government of and by the party and for industry. <coughs> the interests and desires of these two were not identical. The party was largely paranoid, racist, violently nationalistic, and really believed its own propaganda about Germany's imperial missions were the blood and soil. Industry wanted rearmaments and an aggressive foreign policy to support these, not in order to carry out a paranoid policy, but because this was the only kind of program they could see which would combine full employment of labor and equipment with profits. In the period 1936 to 39, the policies of rearmament for war and rearmament for profits ran parallel courses. From 1939 on, they ran parallel only because the two groups shared the booty of the conquered areas and were divergent because of the danger of defeat. This danger was regarded as necessary risk in pursuit of world conquest by the party. It was regarded as an unnecessary risk in pursuit of profits by industry. This brings us to the new ruling group, the party. The party was a ruling group only if we restrict the meaning of the term party to the relatively small group, a few thousand of party leaders. The four million party members were not part of the ruling group, but merely a mass assembled assemble to get the leaders in, in control of the state, but, but annoying and even dangerous one, once this was done. Accordingly, the period after 1933 saw a double action. <coughs> A steady growth of power and influence for the Reichsleiter in respect to the ruled groups, the quartet, and the ordinary members of the party itself, and combined with this, a steady decrease in the influence of the party as a whole in respect to the state. In other words, the leaders controlled the state and the state controlled the party. At the head of the party was the Fuhrer. Then came about the two-score Reichsleiter. Below these was the party hierarchy, organized by dividing Germany into 40 districts. Gau, each under a Gau lighter. Each district was sub subdivided into circles, Kreis, of which there were 808. Each under a Kreis lighter, each Kreis was divided into chapters, Ortsgruppen, each under an Ortsgruppen lighter. These chapters were divided into cells, Zellen, and subdivided into blocks under Zellen lighter and Block lighter. The Blockleiter had to su supervise and spy on 40 to 60 families. The Zellenleiter had to supervise 4 to 8 blocks, 200 to 400 families. The Ortsgruppenleiter had to supervise a town or district of up to 1,500 families through his 4 to 6 Zellenleiter. This party organization became in time a standing threat to the position of industrialists. The threat became more direct after the outbreak of war in 1939. Although, as we have indicated, the issue was suspended for the sake of sharing the booty and for the sake of solidarity in the face of the enemy. The three ruling groups, party, army, and industrialists, remained in precarious balance, although secretly struggling for supremacy in the whole period 1934-45. to 45. In general, there was a slow extension of party superiority, although the party was never able to free itself from dependence on the army and because of their technical competence. The army was brought partly under party control in 1934 when Hitler became president and obtained the oath of allegiance. This control was extended in 1938 when Hitler became commander-in-chief. This resulted in the creation of centers of intrigue within the officers' corps, but this intrigue, although it penetrated to the highest military level, never succeeded in doing more than wound, wound Hitler once out of a dozen efforts to assassinate him. The power of the army was steadily subjected to Hitler. The old officers were removed from control of fighting troops after their failure in Russia in December 1941, and uh, by 1945 the officers' corps had been so disrupted from within that the army was being guided to defeat after defeat by nothing more than tangible uh, than Hitler's intuition, in spite of the fact that most army officers objected to subjecting themselves and Germany to the jeopardies of such an unpredictable and unproductive authority. Business was a somewhat similar but less extreme position. At first, unity of outlook seemed assured, largely because Hitler's mind was able to adopt the colors of an industrialist's mind whenever he made a speech to businessmen. By 1937, businessmen were convinced that armaments were productive, and by 1939, the more unstable elements had even decided that war would be profi profitable. 
But once the war began, the urgent need for victory subjected industry to controls which were hardly compatible with the vision of industrial self-government, which Hitler had adopted from business. The four-year plan, created as early as 1936, became the entering wedge of outside control. After war began, the new Ministry of Munitions, under the control of Fritz Todd and Al Albert Speer, uh, who were Nazis but not businessmen, began to dominate economic life. Outside its rather specialized area, the organization's a four-year plan, almost completely Nazi, was transformed into a general economic council in 1939, and the whole range of economic life was, in 1943, subjected to four Nazis forming the Inter Inter Defense Council. Industry accepted this situation because profits were still protected, uh, promises of material advantages remained bright for years, and the hope did not die that these controls were no more than temporary wartime measures. This, uh, thus, the precarious balance of power between par party, army, and industry, followed in a secondary role by bu bureaucracy and landlords, drove themselves and the German people to a catastrophe so gigantic that it threatened for a, a while to destroy completely all the established institutions and relationships of German society.